Hello, and welcome to another Sports Stories the podcast. Where we talk about all the stories in today's sports world. So today we're going to take a look at the legacy of Mark Sanchez. And even though the one play he's mainly known for in his entire career is the butt fumble, the butt fumble he actually did have a like little magical two-year playoff run with with Rex Ryan in 2009 and 2010. So in 2009, Rex Ryan, Rex Ryan was hired as the new head coach of the New York Jets, and he went into that year's draft looking for his franchise quarterback. Now, after the combine, there were two big names, big names at quarterback, and they were Matt Stafford and Mark Sanchez. And Detroit, going 0-16 the year before, had the first pick, and they went with Matt Stafford, and he is still with them. And even though he's yet to lead them to any playoff wins, he is the all-time passing leader, so that was a good pick by the Lions. And after the Lions, Mark Sanchez was still on the board. And the Jets, sitting at the 17th spot, wanted to get Mark San- wanted to trade up to get Mark Sanchez, seeing as many other teams were looking at him as their potential franchise quarterback. And Mike and Jets Jim Mike Tannenbaum ironically called up Eric Mangini, who is ne- who was then the head coach of the Cleveland Browns, who ironically he had fired the year before to try get a trade done to move up to the Browns' fifth selection to select Mark Sanchez. And they reached a deal where the Jets would trade the 17th pick, a- their second round pick, and defensive end Kenyon Coleman, safety Abram Abram LM and quarterback Brett Ratliff to move up to the fifth slot and take Mark Sanchez. And those three players never developed to be like superstars or whatever, so not too big of a loss for the Jets. But but anyway, they got their guy and they started off their the Jets started off Mark Sanchez's rookie season like okay as they went 4-4 four four in his first eight games. And in the second half, they were able to just squeak into the playoffs, going 5-3 and three in the final eight games, going 9-7. and seven. And funnily enough, in Week 17, they beat the Bengals 37-0 to zero in Cincinnati to, to get into the playoffs. And then the next week in the wild card in Cincinnati, they, they defeated the the Bengals again 24 to 14 so they beat them twice and not home in they're in the Bengals own stadium so that's pretty funny so so then in the divisional round he faced up against the Chargers and they were led by LaDainian Tomlinson and they were an absolute powerhouse going 13-3 in 2009 and they looked to not be stopping but Mark Sanchez and Rex Ryan were able to defeat them to move on to the AFC Championship again against the Colts and the Jets in Week 15 or Week 16, I forget, um, had defeated the Colts, ending their 14-0 regular season winning streak, and they're looking to do it again. Unfortunately, Peyton Manning had other ideas, and the Colts defeated the Jets, so the Jets went home without a ticket to the Super Bowl. But that was okay because the future looked bright for the Jets. So in 2010, they didn't need to squeak into the playoffs because they were able to go 11-5, and a respectable 11-5, and and in the wild card, they defeated the Colts, made a little bit of revenge for the year before, and in the divisional round, Mark Sanchez was going to the one place he never wanted to go. Fuck, bro. In his two games in New England, he had thrown one touchdown and seven interceptions. So, so he wasn't it wasn't looking too good for Mark Sanchez. But they were able to beat them 24-21 and move on to the AFC Championship again. This time in Pittsburgh against the Steelers and they performed very badly in the first half and even though they held the Steelers scoreless in the second half 
they their deficit was too big to come back from, and they again lost in the AFC Championship, going home without a ticket to the big game again. Now, unfortunately for the Jets, this is where all the roller coasters would end. In and in 2011, they went eight and eight, and they missed the playoffs for the first time with Mark Sanchez and Rex Ryan. Now in 2012, here's where things get fun. Now, they started the season off losing, just like in 2011. And on Thanksgiving, again in New York against the Patriots, seen at four and six, the Jets in the second quarter were had a second and ten, and Mark Sanchez dropped back. Hand, there was a running back in the backfield. Handed, didn't hand off to the running back and decided the best way to salvage the play was to try to run and slide at like the line of scrimmage so there was so there was no like penalty on the play like they didn't lose yards but instead what he ended up doing was creating the worst play and probably the funniest in the history of organized sports as he ended up running right into the butt of his own guard and he fumbled it, and Patriot safety, Stephen Gregory, picked it up and ran into the end zone, making a then a 21-0 game. <laughs> so this was the this was the play that made the Jets the laughing stock of the entire NFL. And and after the Jets went six and ten in 2012, that was that was it for Mark Sanchez in New York. And they released. The, the man once dubbed San, Sanchez for his franchise potential. And they and although he did have stints with the Eagles, Cowboys, and Redskins, his career never really took off again after that. And sadly, the, the thing he'll mo probably must be remembered for is the butt fumble, but you also have to look back on his career with the two magical playoff runs with Rex Ryan. And... Even with the butt fumble, there are two. There's one big fact you have to remember about Mark Sanchez. This guy beat Tom Brady and Peyton Manning on the road in the playoffs. How many other quarterbacks can you think of that have done that before? Just think about that. This has been a take by Sports Story. Think stories. Thank you for watching.